This topic deals with toxic management. This is moderated by Allison, and we have Jason, Sarah, and our experienced personnel officer, and conflict advisor Donald. Thanks, I am, Alcyon. Let's talk about some horrible bosses and what we can do about them. Do you want to go first, Jason? Sure. At my last job, I had this guy who was constantly micromanaging everything I did. He also had frequent outbursts and threatened to fire me, almost every day. I hated going to work. What happened? Did you work things out? No, I looked for another job, got one, and moved on. So from my experience in personnel, I will actually applaud what you did. You might have expected a different answer, but no. Finding a new job is actually something to consider. Companies hire you because they have a use for you. Once that use is no longer there, they will get rid of you in a flash. Shop around and find something better. It is far too time-consuming to try and work out the problems of your employer. If they have horrible management, then let them bleed staff. Would that be your answer for areas where jobs are scarce or say you work for the government and there is no competition for your particular job? No, well, not so much. That is different. Now, we need to look at how to actually deal with the bastard boss. If is, is say, a government job, then ultimately, the boss are the people. You need to start with the personnel department. You may also have a trade union. Involve both. If this gets you nowhere, it may be worth looking at talking to higher management. Remember that at those steps, you are putting yourself at risk. But being bullied is not acceptable. Find out if co-workers share the same problem and consider complaining in a group. It depends on the problem with your boss. So far, we've talked about overly micromanaging bosses. Basically, horrible bosses who make our working lives hell. Micromanagement usually comes from insecurity and control issues. The boss has a particular personal issue and takes it out on his or her employees. Micromanagement can, however, come from higher up in the organization, and your boss is simply forced to behave in that way. One example are recent. You must work from the office and not from home mandates then that is generally one more reason to look for another job if the corporate culture is bad. What about the lady who worked for Joe Biden and allegedly was violently grouped, sexually assaulted by him in a hallway in Washington, D.C.? Well, let's not involve politics too much. That is not what this topic is about. Well, this is an interesting occurrence, and sad too, especially for the woman victim of the assault. I read about the case and her story. This was back in 1993 when she thought that she had landed her dream job working for the then-Senator Joe Biden and the Democratic Party, which aligned very well with her ideology. She says that she did escalate to the relevant personnel department, but not only was it not acted upon, but Biden fired her, and her career there was cut short. Biden denies that this took place, and no charges were ever brought to court. Had it happened today, she could easily have had a cell phone in her pocket recording it, and his career would have been over, after less than a social media cycle. At that stage, you really are fighting a party machine. What I will say in more common disputes with management, as well as in extreme cases as the one you mentioned, it is important to remain professional. Do not call the other party names, etc. Stick to the truth. Do not give them any ammunition to smear your character if this comes in front of personnel or even an employment tribunal. You want to have the moral high ground. Collect as much information and make note of times of harassment and such, any type of actual assault is never acceptable and must be escalated as soon as possible, including law enforcement, as it is illegal also. I suppose another cause of action is to try and find another position within the company. Absolutely. Hopefully senior management should realize that there is a problem if no one wants to work for a certain manager and take action. This depends on the corporate organization's culture. There are nowadays rating sites for employers... The biggest is Glassdoor, which I encourage people to check out before they take a new job. Also, leave reviews about your own current job there. You can be anonymous. What about managers who maltreats employees, such as overworking them? Sure. There are laws in most countries, and in the USA, state law varies. But there are laws on maximum allowed hours, minimum wages, and health and safety conditions. You can look these up from your local government. If there is a union at your workplace they may have additional agreed work practices, which management may not violate. As a general rule, if your manager, for instance, demands that you work for free or work beyond the legally allowed time, not only is there nothing they can do to you if you refuse, but they can also get into serious trouble with the law. A boss at my workplace, 
we work as software programmers, told us that from next week, we must come in five days a week. No more working from home. Is this micromanagement a sign that the boss is turning bad? Do you know where this policy came from? The boss himself or higher up? He said that he himself prefers to work from home, but that the CEO sent out a memo to all department heads, and his department head called him into a meeting. So his hands are tied. So the good news, then, is that your boss seems to be on your side. But the bad news is that as the CEO has instituted this policy, then you may have a micromanaging CEO from the looks of it. If this is a problem for you, there won't be much that anyone can do at it, but you should look for another job. If you are okay with going to the office Monday through Friday, then I would continue and see where this goes. Hopefully the CEO is just hung up on the working from home trend. There are some perks like free toilet paper and coffee, right? There's currently nothing in the law regulating home versus office work, so the employers can do as they please here. The coffee ain't free, the bathrooms are always busy, and the noise level in the open plan office is high. I get nothing done at the office. Before the pandemic, they generally allowed us one day from home. I got most my programming done at home, and then the other four days at the office were spent in meetings and just gossiping. I read a study, I think it was from Sweden, that open plan offices reduces concentration and thus productivity. Whenever someone interrupts you, it generally takes the brain 20 minutes to get back to full concentration. At a busy, noisy open plan office, there will be constant such interruption. Management's rationale for open plan offices is that they are cheaper to run. You can get much more staff into the same area as with cubicles. Open plans also encourages interaction, they say. But this depends on the job. For something like software development, which requires concentration, this is detrimental. And on top of that, the way the office is arranged is in groups of four tables pushed together with eight people, two at each desk. A manager sits at each desk also as to supervise us. When I joined eight years ago, we had cubicles, and the noise level was much less, and we even had busy signs we could put up, and everyone, including management, respected those. The guy next to me has some kind of bowel problem, too, so he leaks silent but really smelly farts every few minutes. I will advise that you make a list of pros and cons. Like, so far we've heard mostly cons. Well, the salaries are quite good, a bit above industry average. We get an extra paid week's vacation a year. We generally get an 8% bonus at the end of the year. There's some on pro list. Still, look around what other jobs are out there and try and find out the pros and cons with other jobs and compare. Thanks, I will do that. What about when a boss favors a pericular employee and gives this one a promotion, even though I feel that I deserve that promotion? This happens quite a lot, unfortunately, especially in companies which hasn't realized that this can be a problem. This means that the corporate culture is unlikely going to help you here. If this promotion meant a lot to you, look for another job in a different department or even at a different company. Thanks, team. I think we will wrap it up there. Thanks to our viewers for watching this clip. Comment below to join the discussion. Please remember not to share any personal details about yourself or other people. Take care.